Welcome back. The security situation in Kaduna State is once again a source of concern as several people have been kidnapped. Reportedly by bandits who attacked travelers along the Kaduna Benin Gwari Road in Kaduna State. Sources said the bandits blocked the highway on Tuesday and in the process set about eight vehicles ablaze. Uh, they were said to have later taken away an unspecified number of travelers, mostly women and children, to an unknown location. Now, although the police authorities in the state are yet to confirm the incident, it is unclear if any life was lost in that particular attack. Now, the chairman of Benin Gwari Vangets for Security and Good Governance, Ibrahim Nagwari, confirmed the attack in a statement he issued. In his narration, he said bandits blocked the Benin Gwari Kaduna Highway and intercepted a convoy of motorists with security escorts between Kuriga and Manimi or Manini near Udawa, uh, where they left with an unspecified number of people into the bush. Uh, Nagwari also raised fear that the armed men have formed an alliance with the Ansaru a terrorist group to declare war on the residents of Benin Gwari, stressing that the political will of the government to tackle the security threats has remained a mirage. Really, really uh, sad situation. We have joining us uh, this morning on the breakfast uh, to discuss this unfortunate incident, uh, security expert Dr. Roy Ohidievie. Uh, Dr. Ohidievie, good morning to you and thank you very much for your time. Yeah, good morning. It's always a pleasure. All right. Um, Kaduna State is in the news again. Um, it seems that uh, uh, those traveling interstate or from other states to Kaduna or within Kaduna State uh, moving convoys. Um, this particular incident happened according to uh, that uh, uh, statement. Uh, by the person we mentioned there, um, they were in a convoy and they had security experts and yet a security escort, and yet still they were attacked by bandits and abducted. Well, um, you, you, in your preview, you have actually come forward with um, the disheartening situation we find ourselves. I served in Kaduna for nine years in one mechanized infantry division from 1990 to 1999 as a young soldier. Now, Kaduna is um, blessed with a lot of um, security agencies, um, um, training schools, headquarters, you know, and it's just spread all around, both the prisons, the police, the military. So you begin to wonder, what is happening? You know, in those days, we used to do bush exercise. Just training or, or retraining or refresher. We go into the bush from Jaji down to Zaria or from Jaji down to Kaduna, all in the bush and come out in Kaduna South. We know all of those places from the air. It's easy to just get the triangles into, you know, so when we begin to face this kind of crisis, you will understand that there is compromise. Even the chief of army staff, see, the chief of army staff came out to say that there are infiltrators in the military. So if we know also that the government of Kaduna State has also held series of liaison meetings with quote and unquote bandits, and they have given these people money many times in the guise of buying peace. Now, we have also seen where so we are arrested. No criminal justice system where such and such persons are taken through the criminal justice system. Penalties are accruing to culpable offenses you were caught with. You know, so none of that is happening. So what are we saying? All right. Uh, um, um, uh, Dr. Roy Ohidievier, let's uh, take a pause at this juncture to uh, play a uh, a clip of, of what transpired on that road and um, see what happened to the the victims. This is user-generated content, so the quality wouldn't be the highest, but we'll listen to that and we'll come back to you.
All right, uh, Dr. Roy Hidive, uh, you online, so I just do a, a, an explain, explain of what really happened happened in that video. Uh, you had uh, one of the, um, uh, the the people in the car where the video was being shot shouting shiga shiga shiga, which means enter, enter, enter. And what happened was that um, the clip shows passengers who deserted their vehicle and were running away. Uh, maybe they have been running for some time. Uh, someone come with a vehicle to ask what's happening and uh, you know, offering to help them because they've been running away from some sort of danger uh, for some time, lots of them. Um, though the police have, have, have not come out to release a statement or to say, uh, or confirm this, but um, there are credible sources saying that happened and we can see the video that uh, we just played there. Um, uh, you've, you've, you've talked about um, you know, complicity from within the, uh, the military apparatus in the country and you're saying that Kaduna State is a terrain where a lot of soldiers like yourself, you are uh, an ex-security uh, um, official. You were trained there. Do you know the terrain very well? Um, but some would argue that the, it, it's quite a wide and a large terrain that conventional warfare tactics cannot address the situation. You know, just like uh, you have in Zambiza forest where you have a wide uh, forest terrain. You have something similar in Kaduna State, which is uh, very perfect for sort of sort of guerrilla tactics. Wouldn't you say it's um, not the same ball game? Well, um, thank you. You know, when you watch such videos, the, the traumatic effect on people that actually pass that road is different from yours. There are people that cannot live without going through those roads. That is how they get their daily bread. Transporters, petty business um, transactions, and all other kinds of traders that need to move goods from one point to the other. This traumatic situation prevails. Now, it's not only the military. You know, complicity and um, condescending is in all our agencies. Look at the um, Abakari case. You know the amount of drugs that have been compromised between Abakari and the NDLA officers that were culpable. Do you know that these guys feed on drugs? Now look at the terrain that you are talking about. Human beings live there, Nigerians, the Peters. Now those communities that you are talking about, persons were coming from that place to join the police, join the military, join the PSS and they are retired, and they go back home. What is the government's plan? If you say it is too large a place, don't you have the database of your ex-servicemen? Can't are your ex-servicemen not taking pension? Can't you correlate their dominance of those environments into intelligence and appropriate attitude to begin to look at ways to compromise their own practice? Don't you have people concerned, like councillors, local government chairmen, that are answerable to the Federal Republic of Nigeria? You see, the, this issue you are looking at is from up to down. It is from the apex of our government. This compromise, this lackadaisical attitude, you know, and if you don't implement penalties, you can never stop criminality. Everybody is being compromised. Now we have set of people that go into the bush to go and have dialogue with criminals 
and coming out to tell the government that you are the ones that is making them behave like that. We have the man that was just released now in the east, the elderly man, the, the priest or a uh, deacon or a deacon or something. Now he said, that those guys said, we don't have problem with you people. It is the Nigerian government. So if the government is being mentioned in all the interviews of bandits, terrorists, criminals, lawless goons, why will the government not address it? Now we are all looking at 2023, everybody sharing bundles everywhere. We are forgetting that there are people that were kidnapped in Kaduna, in the school near Defense Academy. There were people kidnapped in Defense Academy. There was a train blown off track and the people taken into captivity. Till death. And some of them were released. You know, those ones that were released, what did the government do to track some of their activities? What did the government do till death to release the others that are in captivity? See, we, we cannot continue uh, slugging this issue. The government must wake up to its responsibility. All agencies must become professional and remove political influence from their decisions and their actions. That is the only way forward. It's uh, precarious uh, as it is also in the southeast um, with uh, kidnappings, uh, abductions, uh, killings, beheadings uh, recorded in recent time. Uh, no one has been arrested, you know. Well, we have some arrests have been made, but we have not seen any concrete arrests, you know, and even parading of uh, 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 of gunmen, you know, and any revelations so far. And no murder cases have been solved, you know. Uh, we're still waiting for the unraveling of who killed uh, and beheaded uh, a lawmaker and a number of states. Though we hear some persons, about 70 of them have been arrested. Um, how far away is Nigeria from being... Uh, uh, a failed state? Well, um, I've had that argument and that discussion. Now, you see, there is, um, someone says there is difference from a failed state and a weak state. You know, so for me, I believe that the breakdown of law and order is when you are beginning to say you have a failed state. The inactivity of the security agency, not because they cannot um, attack criminals, but because they cannot even dress up to go to work. That is the time you begin to look at this that you have a failed state. Here you will have flags of different groups hoisted in different parts of the country, holding ground and claiming territory within the territorial integrity of this country. That's the time that you begin to, to see that you have a failed state. But for now, I think it is an abuse of office. So many of us are in office that we don't know the relevance. You know? And we don't carry out professional ethics. In the police, there are ethics. In the military, there are ethics. Even for promotion, for deployment. Do you know that some soldiers are in front line for three years, four years, five years? What are you doing there? They become criminal with the people. You know, they start to do business with the people. Do you know that some police officers, they are not promoted and they are still allowed, they are disgruntled and they are still allowed to carry arms. Nobody does psychological review for our armed men. No, do you know that none of the police or military in all the training institutions, I have not seen NDLA asking that they do drug tests. Mm -hmm. Do you know that there is no review of financial transactions if there was? How come Abakiari could amass all those properties and all those monies they were transacting with? So there are no reviews. How come military officers? would have such an amount in his account and be withdrawing bundles of money and moving them around. So there are no financial tracking. Everything is just as comatose. All we hear about is we will rejig and we will restructure the security architecture. That is a fallacy. All right. Um, uh, w w what stands in the way of um, the authorities' federal government declaring... Uh, 
uh, a total lockdown in Kaduna State. Um, our state of emergency, like had been declared in the time of Olusha Gobasanjo in Plateau State, something similar in Kaduna State, a total lockdown and um, a, a sort of a surge, you know, a military operation um, to to rid the state of these uh, criminals. I mean, remember in, in, in the United in, in Iraq in 2007, America had what you call a surge where uh, they deployed 20,000 more troops to Iraq and they focused on Baghdad, you know, in a bid to secure Baghdad, uh, um, a, a special military um, operation. What stops the federal government from doing something like that? Locking the entire Kaduna state down and then deploying the full weight of the military there in an operation that may last weeks or months to try and rid the state of the criminals? Well, for Kaduna state, you will understand that there are lines. According to some people, they say there are lines that you should not cross. <laughs> the, the ethnicity is a challenge. Once you are Hausa or Fulani, there is a design that you cannot be touched, you know, because you are in your terrain. Then there is the religion. The religion itself has now seen abuse because these same elements of criminality, they go into mosque, they go into, into the MI's palace, the heads of the community that are also Muslim, and they adopt them, they rape their women. You know, so can you remember the, the children that were uh, kidnapped from schools? You know, so you begin to see that the compromises are all these lines that people hold too dear to agree for an outside professional assessment to review criminality. You know, so if you are from this tribe and you begin to do something and you say, I am this grown kid, they will look for someone like Umi to come and start talking to you. Why are they disgruntled? The disgruntled people in the Niger Delta, they were complaining of abuse of resources, violation of the, the sanctity of their area, water, land, you know? And if you see when all of that came into the NNDC, the same people that were from the South South that were asked to help the NBC, were siphoning the money. So Nigerians are naturally criminal. But once it draws towards ethnicity or religion, it becomes a problem to handle. And that compromise is what is destroying the opportunity to meet these things in the board in Kaduna. Uh, uh, Dr. Ohidiave, what has happened to the nation's intelligence apparatus? Um, we've not seen any names as far as the banditry uh, or terrorism as it's uh, being defined by a court is concerned. We've not seen any profiles. Um, we've heard of Ansaru, which is a new one, uh, in addition to Boko Haram and uh, ISWAP. But we, we're not getting information. We're not getting seen briefings or what is going on with the nation's security and um, intelligence apparatus. I'm sure you're very well aware of workings of that, that, that uh, sector. Well, if you look at the at apparatus, that's why I always say that there's no need to restructure or reject. You know, we have the TSS, we have the NSA to oversee, we have the ICTC, we have the EFCC, we have the police. In the police, you have the SFU, you have the special crime bosses, you have the armed combat unit, uh, even the SARS that was just restructured now that didn't see the light of day. You know, we have the, the customs, the immigration, NDLEA. Those are the apparatus that we have. They are existing, you know, and I tell you, if you remember, you can go online and check. There are key officers of all of these apparatus that have retired, that keep saying that intelligence is robust. It is not actionable. Intelligence gathering is robust. We know, if I tell you today, all our security agencies in Nigeria, they know the names of those people involved in the Kaduna district. They know the names of terrorists. The, our our um, head of judiciary, who said he has the names of sponsors of uh, terrorism in Nigeria. Still dead. The names are in their, 
in their in their wardrobes. Now we know if you listen to some of the heads of agencies that have retired, some generals, even this other man that was CBN commander and so director before that contested for presidency that died. All of them that has come out, there are generals too that have come out. Our intelligence in Nigeria is robust. We know. As I sit with you, the, the time you will see a kidnap, if you want it to be resolved today, you will hear that IROT has picked up everybody. You will hear. But what happens is the judicial processes to apply penalty. What happens is to get the government willpower to instigate an internal investigation system to root out all the opportunities for the um, irrelevant vulnerabilities. Those are the areas we have challenges. We know that we have intelligence. It is not actionable. Really, really worrying times. Um, at this point, is there a need, because this has also been part of the conversation, uh, some, some have suggested that there may be a need at this point to engage the help of um, the international community, uh, both uh, 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 countries and governments and also the private um, security contractors in, in, in nipping this in the bud? Is this something that, that you think should be explored? Me, you are talking about mercenaries, if I, if I would say. Yes, yes. Mercenaries and even, even, like even foreign, in, foreign armies, like the French did in Mali, in, you know, against the Tuareg rebels. Let me give you a secret now. Did you just hear a report recently that Interpol collaborated with our internal security system and picked up two people at the same time on um, cyber crime, one in Edo State and one in the East. That news is bad right now. Now, there was a time that a, a, an American was kidnapped. You remember that they came into the area, picked up their person, neutralized all the threats, and took him away. In this same, in this same crime that we are. Now, you remember that there are transactions of hush puppies that we are that we are put together. Look, the international community they they collaborate with Nigerians. What happens is there is exchange of interest. The Americans cannot reveal. There was a man. There's a viral video of a, of a machinery that said they wanted to come in and neutralize Boko Haram in those days of the growth and development and expansion of terrorism, mm -hmm. that the government said no, they should stop. There's a video like that, a, a, a white man being interviewed. Mm -hmm. See, we cannot have machineries in Nigeria. It's not going to work. The machineries will be neutralized. See, Nigerians that you see, they are more intelligent than 80% of the human beings in this world. Nigeria that you see, we have private security companies that can take up that contract, arm their personnel, of, especially made up of ex-servicemen that are within the age bracket of combat readiness, and dissolve all the threats that are within a state, if empowered by the government. We have the same kind of people that can form vigilante, is it not hunters that are pairing up with soldiers, that you hear civilian joint back for, and they neutralize a lot of criminal elements. We gain guns. We don't need mercenaries. We don't need external uh, influence or input. We can do it. Let the government take their hands off the agencies. Let political interests be withdrawn from the agencies. Let the agency personnel see the results of compromise by the penalties that will be issued out, decrees that will be put on court, and all the extra speed that will be assigned to such cases. And you see people penalized, shot, or hanged, or electrocuted then you will take the take dressing. All right. Um, 2023 uh, general elections are around the corner, and um, one of the reasons the current president was um, uh, the favorite of some people was because of his uh, credential as a former general and uh, uh, some of his records uh, in his time as um, a serviceman. Uh, his famous speech on his inauguration day, 
um, is uh, our, you know, uh, ordering the command and control structure to relocate to the northern part of the country and all that. Um, well, he may go down in history as a general who couldn't secure his country. But uh, looking ahead, if nothing changes before Buhari leaves, what should Nigerians be looking at um, when deciding who to vote for in the 2023 presidential elections as far as the security situation in the country is concerned? What kind of person should they look out for? Well, um, Nigerians should leave the online, online ranting. They should leave the WhatsApp group. They should leave their Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, where they make a lot of noise and find their way to the registration center. I have my PVC. Everybody should have their PVC. Nobody should vote on party line. If you vote on party line, when the party is over and the DJ puts up, you will be lonely. Everybody must have their PV, must vote for someone that has the prerequisite to put us on a trajectory that we begin to articulate a progress plan, where we begin to look at all our vulnerabilities and assign solutions. I have the person I'm going to vote for. I'm not a member of any party. I'm not a delegate. But I assure you that I'm voting for an intellectual, a man that is designed in his brain, his body is fit, his mind is fit, and he has the followership of the youth who are seen that if they miss this opportunity, they are going to suffer a lot. All right. All right. Um, I'm Ambassador Dr. Roy Ohidi is a military veteran, um, security consultant, and uh, analyst. Thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure having you join us. Always on a breakfast. pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Interesting times uh, for the country, and uh, you know, lots of people having a plan B. That what is the plan B? It's just to exit the country, to relocate, to go abroad, and um, will everyone, you know, travel out? We have a decision to make in 2023 and uh, the fate of the country hangs in the balance and rests on what Nigerians decide in 2023. The work starts now. We don't have to wait till 2023. The work starts now. My name is Kofi Bartels and that's the size of a package on the breakfast. And don't forget you can follow uh, Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Simply search for Plus TV Africa on Facebook, on YouTube, we are at Plus TV Africa. If you'd like to watch a uh, live stream on YouTube, you can visit Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. From all of us here at Plus TV Africa Studios in Victoria and Lagos, thanks for joining us. We return tomorrow. Up next is the news at nine.